Hey Rovers, Wave Rover has just left the building. The Wave Rover 650, a design based on my single-handed ocean voyages. She's small, light, but easy to build and strong enough to cross any ocean. My name's Alan Mulholland and this is the Wave Rover story. Well, Rovers, a big thank you to all of you who have participated in the Rover Coin campaign. It's going very well. There's still 60 coins left. A big thank you to Sid, who has purchased two coins for me to give to some of the outstanding helpers who've really helped the Wave Rover project. Now, as I said, Wave Rover is no longer in the building, but that's not really the story this week. This week, it's all about what happened just before she left the building. So in this video, I, I do a little bit of work on the rudder, uh, some electrical system uh, updates or um, electrical system progress has been made. What else? We put non-skid paint on the boat and then we, I bedded uh, pretty much all the deck hardware and the port lights. Now I used a combination of butyl tape and also uh, Cicaflex uh, bedding compound. And I'll go over the advantages and disadvantages of each of those and why I chose one over the other for different applications. But the big news, the big news is the launch date has been scrubbed. Now that doesn't mean it's canceled, not by a long shot. It just means that we're pushing the launch date back by three weeks. So the launch will be the 29th of July at the Charlottetown Yacht Club. Uh, I had to coordinate with them and also we had to make sure that we would have all the supplies that we need. So we're still missing a few items that I need to put onto the boat and this extra three weeks gives, gives me a chance to, to get them brought to the build site here so I can finish the boat off. There's also a little thing that's happening. Now, I, I'm putting a lot of time into the boat. In fact, I'm putting about oh, 15, 16 hours a day into the boat. But as I've noticed, I'm uh, getting a little bit fatigued with it because I've been doing it 24 seven, well, I guess 16 seven for uh, quite a few weeks. And I don't really take time off. In fact, I hardly ever leave the property maybe once a month I'm leaving and it's a, it has to be something absolutely necessary. So uh, as my economics professor used to say, there's the beware of the law of diminishing returns. So that means, well, you know, as I put more time in, am I getting one unit of productivity for every unit of time that I'm putting in in addition to eight hours? And I can honestly say no. Uh, I've noticed that as I've become more fatigued, it, the time I'm putting in is not as productive as the time when I'm fresh. No surprise. Mrs. Rover has mandated that I take one full day off a week. So that's another reason that I've had to push back the, the launch date is to, um, you know, to follow, to follow up on that mandate. Because when you marry Mrs. Wright, you better listen to Mrs. Wright. And uh, it makes good sense. You know, all kidding aside, uh, I believe that taking that one day off is actually going to even increase production over the six days that I'm working on Wave Rover. Well, there's a lot to do. Time to crack on. that. That's three layers laminated together. Okay, now the rest of the cut. Wow, what a difference a few days make. You know, we had almost, I'd say, 10 days of fog, rain, overcast, high humidity now the sun has come out and I'm like this photovoltaic cell you know uh, 
a solar panel I'm just getting all that energy and I need it because there's a ton of work to be done but this rudder I'm just getting it ready to glass the front and back of it and as you can see it's actually I think quite a pleasing shape it's considerably different than what Andy had designed I've increased the wetted area of this rudder pretty much uh, doubled it and we'll see how that goes and as you can see all the epoxy is now hardened and uh, th that's for well these two right here are for the trim tab and these four here are essentially replacements for your standard steel pintles and gudgeons so we are glass we haven't been, we haven't glass now in a long time but it all comes back it's kind of like riding a bike and what we've done here, some of the interesting things. So this is the rudder, but I've pre-marked everything with a Sharpie and that'll, you can see right through the glass then and we'll know exactly where to drill our holes because this is going to get a round over and I'd lose the ability to sharply transfer those lines. So what we did was we wetted out the ply we put the fiberglass on and now we've wetted out the fiberglass. We're just mixing up a little extra just to fill the weave of the fiberglass. Then it's time to put the peel ply on. Thank you very there much. You go. Now we'll just... So we only need a little bit of epoxy to fill out the weave because it's already saturated. It's already translucent. Just. So I'm not squeezing hard. The fiberglass is already wetted out. So that's a good example there. You can see the weave very, very clearly. So that weave is nice and secured and there's a lot of friction on there. So I'm just really taking this liquid and just filling that weave. Will this give it a better paint surface, Alan? Oh yeah, it'll give it a better paint surface. Um, It'll also make it really easy to sand it back and adhere the tape to because we want to round these edges and put fiberglass tape over the edges. That's the next step. Hey Wave Rover fans, Steven here. Uh, working on the uh, electrical circuitry. Um, we've temporarily installed cabin lights on the port and starboard side. They'll have to be removed for another layer of painting. Uh, you can see the main positive and negative cables coming up from down below from the uh, uh, bus uh, terminals. And everything is well fused uh, for all circuits to protect them. And it's moving along smoothly, but to do everything, it takes time. So we're getting ready to put the port lights on. And this is the way I've done it in the past, and it's been successful. I, I'm sure there are other ways. But before you can do this, what you need to do is put tape around the window. And I'm just going to do that right now. Let's see, I'll pass the camera off. And this is just to help the bedding compound that we'll be using from going all over our product. Well, our product being Wave Rover. Make sure you have a sharp blade. That's the trick here.
Okay, so what I'm using is Cicaflex 295 UV and it's an adhesive sealant. So it, 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 it does have adhesive properties and it's particularly set up for high UV and weather resistant adhesive for bonding of polycarbonate glass. So you want something that's UV resistant because light will get through there somehow. And uh, this should last a long time. I believe this is the very same stuff I used on Wave Rover. Uh, and uh, we didn't have any leaks whatsoever through the port lights. So these are quarter inch by inch and a half stainless steel and we have a washer setting at the top there. Okay, so what I'm doing is we're, we're torquing these now. They've all been sort of tightened, but not overly tight. And now we're just making sure that they're equally torqued. And you don't want to really torque them too high, just a little bit. Okay, good. Good. Okay, so at this point, you'll see that they're squeezed out all the way around all the ports. And we're just going to let that harden up overnight. Then we'll come back with a razor and we will uh, just trim that off both inside and outside. Now I'll take care of the residue inside the window later when I have a little more time and it's hardened up quite a bit more. Now using the same technique of bedding as I did with the ports, I've done the mass partner, the anchor bit, and the anchor roller. I'm using this product now. It's um, Sika 291 Fast Cure Marine Adhesive Sealant, and it's good for uh, above or below the waterline. I just went with uh, Sika Flex because that's what I've used in the past. Uh, they're not sponsoring this video or any such thing. I also use the same product to install the drogue chain plates. So you can see there and over on the port side. So I have a number of smaller fittings to put on. Uh, these ones I may, these are cleats, my mooring cleats, and of course the push pit and pull pit. Uh, a number of those will have to be filled in. I won't be using the Sika Flex for that. I'll be using um, butyl tape for that because they're small and easy to do. I use the bedding compound for the big items, the big steel items with, you know, possibly uh, some sort of un uneven surface underneath. Which is looking pretty sharp. After lunch, I will uh, deal with the vents. Now, if you're not interested in the full installation of the air-only ventilators, skip ahead to minute 2225.
So we're going to put this plate on here, uh, but what we have to do, and it's not really clear in the instructions, is we have to get these nuts on the underside of this plate and get this plate down without anything falling out. So what I've been doing is I've been putting just a small amount of bedding compound in the holes. Then, just placing the nuts into those slots. And this will hold them in just long enough for you to uh, do the, uh, get the uh, bolts in. They're actually machine screws, not bolts. And I am also thinking that this will act like a locking compound on the threads, which will prevent the screw from coming undone. It's one of those steps that it's not, you don't immediately need these, but uh, when you, but this is going to be installed by the time you do need them. Okay, so here we go. And what I'm doing here is I'm lining up the pre-drilled holes for the screws. So this is the time that now I've got the plates on, bedding compound is squeezing out all the way around. The nuts are on the underside of this plate, very important. And now you've got to put the O-rings on. And this O-ring will go on this lip here. These are a little bit tricky to put on. So with the O-ring on, now's the time you want to put these little flotation balls in. And you don't want to have any bedding compound coming up and touching these because, of course, that'll prevent them from floating up when you need them. Rolling. All right, the next thing you want to install is this little cover for all these balls. And it's easy to do, you just line up the holes. Now, I prefer to use a screwdriver for this because this is just plastic and you don't want to over tighten anything. Okay, so now's the time we want to put these O-rings on. Let's see, this one's not too difficult. Whoop. Okay. And this O-ring. So at this point, we're ready to put the cap on. And let's see. Unfortunately, there are six holes, but only three screws in the package. Uh, it looks like it's some sort of metric screw. Uh, the closest I have is a Robertson that it, you can see, it's a three quarter inch. It looks to be about, oh, just under an eighth longer but it's the same diameter. This is a number six, number six by three quarters. So I'll try that. Let's see, I need a Robertson driver now. I'll see if it works. Otherwise we're going to have to postpone this. Okay, that seems to work just fine. So the last step is the cover, and uh, the cover's interesting because you have these little slots, and these slots line up with these little baffles so that when water hits, um, it, it'll be able to drain. Eventually, it'll work its way out. Clever design. So just like that. Let's see. Air only is sideways. Can we do it so it's square to the hatch? 
No. <laughs> It'll, either way we do it, it's, it's going to be at a jaunty angle. Okay, so now we put these screws in to those nuts that we had previously held in place with a little bit of bedding compound. And there we go, just picked one up. So there's the vent, that's what it looks like. It's almost done. Um, now it's 6 p.m. right now. I've been going since about 6.30 this morning. So I'm going to stop and take supper. And by the time I come back, this bedding compound should be stiff enough that I can cut it free. We can peel back the tape and see the finished product. Okay, so it's still a little soft, but we've got to carry on and move on to the next project. So we're going to try to pull this. Oh yeah, it's coming off pretty nicely. Uh oh. Uh oh. Going to have to take this. Hello, Professor. Hello. How you doing? Uh, just give me a second here. I'm just removing some uh, bedding compound. Two seconds. So we're going to mount this U-bolt uh, and it has this sort of uh, elongated washer and I'm going to use butyl tape. So butyl tape is uh, really easy to use. Just need to Sort of lay it out. I'll just grab a little bit more. The thing about butyl tape is it doesn't uh, harden over time. In fact, that first piece is probably three years old. Just going to lay it in. And it's uh, it's approaching 10 o'clock at night and it's been a long day. Okay, there we go. And now I'll just push it through this hole here. And I'll go on the inside, I'll put the nuts on, we'll tighten that down. So I, I just cleaned up the edges on this, I pulled it back. This was all the squeeze up, which is probably about a third of what I put on. But it's nice and flat and uh, moisture and water is not going to get inside this fitting now. And to clean up, there's a little bit, just grab, you know, you can use your thumbnail. It's perfectly safe. In many ways, it's so easy to use, but I only like using it on small fittings, uh, not on big, large things. So I just installed this U-bolt, uh, and um, this is the residue that came off of it. It's butyl, and it's, you know, it's really easy to put on. It cleans up really nicely. Butyl has been around a long time. It's used in the construction industry. Um, what's the difference between butyl and the bedding compound that I was using earlier, the Cicaflex? Well, um, both seal and uh, they seal very well, but the Cicaflex also has adhesive properties. The butyl really doesn't have much in the way of adhesive qualities at all. So, uh, but it is very easy to clean up and it's great for small objects like this. If it were a big thing, uh, for example, the handles that I just did here, um, I prefer to use bedding compound. Uh, actually, the handles were probably, that could have gone either way, but it just, uh, just occurred to me that I had the tube open. It was right at that size where I could have gone with butyl, but happy I went with the bedding compound. 
Well, it is 11 o'clock. Got quite a few deck fittings on today. Tomorrow's a big day. Have to get some sleep because I'm going to try to haul the boat out of the boat shed tomorrow. Well, we got a lot done in this video. Now, here's a question for you guys. I have to make what will probably be one of the single biggest purchases uh, for Wave Rover, and that is the outboard engine. So I want to get something small, and it's really just an auxiliary, something to help Wave Rover get in and out of harbor in those tight spaces where I don't scratch one of the uh, super yachts. So uh, I've narrowed it down. It's either going to be the Honda 2.3 or the Yamaha 2.5. These are both four-stroke engines. They're both about the same price point. So the pros and cons. Well, the Honda is a little bit lighter, but it's air-cooled. The con is, because it's air-cooled, it's really loud. I mean, people complain about them, it seems. So, uh, the Yamaha. The Yamaha is a little bit heavier, a little more robust, and, but she weighs about another oh, five pounds, five or six pounds over the Honda, but she's quite quiet and she has a little more power and frankly looking at both she's probably a lot more robust but uh, i'd like to hear from you guys you know what i want i think you know what i want so uh let me know what you what your thoughts are on those two engines like i said i'm leaning toward the yamaha 2.5 if there's something i'm missing please let me know as always, Rovers, thanks for watching and forge your own adventure. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a very special announcement. Rover Coin has arrived. And in the ancient tradition of seafarers, this coin, which is has an individual serial number, 001, will go under my mast. Now, I had to order 100 of which 85 are available as a fundraiser. Now, I'm not sure what metal they're made out of, but it's not gold, although you might think so. But I have it on good authority from someone in the Summerside Financial District that Rovercoin could be a great investment in two ways. One, Wave Rover has a great adventure, and this individually numbered coin grows with the popularity of the Wave Rover 650s. And two, that Wave Rover and her skipper come to an untimely end and Rover coins will skyrocket in value. That's not exactly a win-win for me. However, if you're interested in Rover coin, uh, they are $125. It's a fundraiser to help me fund the upcoming voyage. Or you might be thinking, hey, I want more than one. Can I get a discount? Of course you can. If you buy three or more, these will be $100 each. I know it's a lot of money, and don't put yourself out if you're living paycheck to paycheck. It's not important. I love you guys, each and every one of you, whether you buy a coin or not. But this is a fundraiser to help out Wave Rover. Well, the Wave Rover patrons, with their pledges of support, really do make the creation of these videos possible. Now, if you'd like to know more about Wave Rover's patron page and Benefactor's Bulkhead, I have links to both those pages in the video description. Now, another way to help Wave Rover, and it doesn't cost you a dime, is by sharing our content on your social media. So now, as always, Rovers, thanks for watching. Give us one more. Brilliant.